Hello everybody and welcome to our final day of Holiday Club. No Can you way. believe it's come to an end so quickly? Wow, already? That's crazy. I know, but we've got a day full of exciting things to do like we have every day. I mean, I'm just really looking forward to being able to finish this week with another fantastic look at a key worker. And today we're thinking about our doctors and nurses, those people who are just out there fighting on our behalf and doing such an incredible job at the moment. So big thank you to them. We'll start off with a big thank you to them, but we're going to learn a little bit more about them as the, today goes on. But as always, we're going to hand over to Imi, who's going to lead our final act of worship for this week.
much, Immy. We've had a great time worshipping God together here. Um, and we couldn't have done it without Immy leading us in all those actions. I mean, absolutely, Immy has been just amazing to have leading us in worship every single morning this week. You have been a real blessing. So we love you lots, Immy. Thank you for everything that you have done for us this week. So we've been thinking about key workers all week. We've thought about teachers, retail workers. We've thought about postmen and delivery drivers. We've also been thinking about our rescue services. And today, we're thinking about our doctors and nurses. So Alice is going to be doing her final interview with Jade, who is a nurse. Hello, children. It's Alice again here, and I've got another key worker with us. So I'm going to hand over to Jade. So Jade, can you tell us, what is your job? Hello children, I'm um, a children's nurse at the hospital, Royal Stoke Hospital. Oh great, and can you give us a bit of insight into what your day looks like or what your job involves? Um, my job involves uh, looking after children when you're not feeling well, so I don't know if anyone's ever been into hospital, but I'm, um, if you ever come into hospital then I would help, hopefully help to make you feel better. So um, we try and be fun and try and like engage with the children, make it a positive experience um, and give you some medicine to make you feel better um, and just do some observations. So taking your temperatures just to make sure that you're feeling a lot better. OK, that's great, Jay. So what's it being like to work during this pandemic then? Well, um, I, I've just had a baby, well, last February, uh, last April, but I went off in February and COVID hit in March onto the ward. So I haven't seen too much, but I've done my keep in touch days when you just go for half a day. Mm -hmm. And it's not as bad on the children's ward, but we are getting asked to go work on the adult wards and we are going out of our comfort zones to look after because luckily children aren't getting as bad effects of COVID and because people are washing hands and people aren't seeing the children, they're not getting like the normal bugs like the bronchiolitis. So we've like stepped forward and took on a role of being adult nurses, which is very different for, than the children's nurse. And we've just there and hoping like supporting the adults when they get really poorly and need a lot of help. Oh, so you're doing such a fantastic job. So can you tell us, Jade, what's your favourite thing about your job? Um, my favourite is actually when the children are ready to go home because some we see them coming really poorly mm -hmm. um, and really struggling. And then because children are quite resilient, they can recover a lot quicker than an adult. And so then like the next day they could be fully recovered or a few days later when you're back on shift. And it's lovely to see a child being a child running around the corridors, you know, wanting to go home, wanting to play. Um, so I think that's the best job, best part is seeing them leave in a nice way because they're the better. Yeah, that must be such an amazing feeling. Now, I don't know if you can answer this question, Jade, but I guess what's the worst thing about your job or what, what don't you like doing? Um... I don't know. I do really enjoy my job. Okay. Um, I think sometimes when I can't give everybody enough time, I don't like that. So if we're rushed and we've got, you know, we're really busy and like I'm chatting to one mum and child and then I've got to go to another. I don't like not being able to spend enough quality time with my patients. Yeah, yeah, that can be really difficult. And then we've just got one last question. We, we're desperate. We've asked all of our key workers this question. So if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Um, definitely to fly, just to get around quick. <laughs> definitely, you'd beat all the traffic, wouldn't you, and get to work yeah. in the nick of time? I can, I can sleep in as much as possible. Well, you can't with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think you'll be doing much of that. <laughs> but yeah. thank you so much, Jade, um, and thanks for taking time out of your busy day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Welcome back guys, it's our final day of our Minute to Win It challenge. It's a tiebreaker, so I wonder who's going to win out of Amelia and Jess. Our challenge today is called Noodling Around, so a short video is going to play to show us what to do. Noodling Around 
Although there are over 350 varieties of pasta, this challenge requires only two. Using a single piece of uncooked spaghetti held in their mouth, the contestant must lift a total of six penny pasta. If the spaghetti breaks, the player must begin anew. Use the hands at any time and it's child baby. Failure to complete this challenge in 60 seconds may result in elimination. Three, two, one, go! Jess has got one. Amelia has two. I hope the pasta doesn't break. <laughs> Jess is the winner. Well done, Jess. So, I'm so sorry, Amelia. You were so, so close. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. <laughs> so, Jess is the clear winner for the Minute to Win It Challenge. I wonder who is the winner in your household? Okay, guys, we're going to have our final session of craft, and you're going to be making some mosaic hearts. Hello, everyone. It's Alice here from Swan Bank, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a mosaic heart. So for this craft, you'll need some glue, um, something to write with. Here I've got a Sharpie, some different pieces of coloured paper, or just something with patterns on, or something with a different colour, your heart template, which you can find in your craft pack, or you can use, or you can make your own actually if you wanted to. So to start with, what we're going to do is get all our pieces of paper. So I've got four different colours here and I'm just going to start cutting them because I want to make little pieces to sort of stick onto my heart. So I'm going to start cutting into a couple of strips like this. And then I've got a tub here which I'm going to collect all my pieces so they don't go everywhere. You can perhaps use a plate or if you've got a spare lunch box you could use that. So I'm just cutting them. And if you do need some help, you can always ask an adult because we are using some scissors which are quite sharp. So I've collected some and I'd already started to um, cut some earlier. So I've got quite a bit here. So what you need to do is just to take one piece and get your glue and start sticking it. So I don't know if you know what a mosaic looks like, but it's tiny little pieces and it can be sometimes made out of clay or tiles or something like that, but we're going to be using paper. And we're going to stick and keep sticking until we fill our heart. Now I'm going to add it quite quick, but you can spend quite a bit of time and you might want to cut out other pieces to stick in between the lines. I'm just doing it quite quick so you can see what we've got to do. And it's quite tricky because you'll get quite a bit of glue on your fingers. Okay, so we will keep keep sticking until our heart is filled. So mine isn't completely filled, but you can see I've got gaps and you might want to actually cut out maybe some triangles or circles that to fit sort of the, the different areas that are missing. And then, just put the lid back on, you're going, going to write I'll write it here. God heals our hearts. Because today's session is all about God healing, the healing power. You will have seen an interview from a nurse um, and Jade will have talked about how she helps children in her job as a nurse. So this craft hopefully will help you remember all about how Jesus can heal and it'll be a reminder so you might want to put a hole punch in or hang it up or stick it up on your wall so it can remind you of all the stories you've heard this week. Thank you so much to Alice for doing our craft time today. I think I'd find that a really satisfying craft to do, piecing all the little bits together to make the mosaic heart. As always, even though it's the last day, we would still love you to send in your pictures and videos of your finished crafts that you have done at home. We love seeing you guys getting creative, and I'm really going to enjoy doing that one with my daughter at home and then putting it up somewhere in our home, because I think it'll look really, really pretty. 
It's great when we can make something that we can then put in our house to remind us all about the things we've learned about Jesus this week. So I think Jess is going to teach us something new about Jesus. Now she's going to teach us all about how Jesus is our healer, just like the healthcare workers we've been thinking about. Hi, everybody. Uh, It's Jess again. I know that you've seen a lot of my face already this week, but I want to end our week with another message for you. We've had some fantastic God slots done by friends of ours from across the circuit, and now it's my turn, Um, and I hope that you really enjoy what I have to say. So all week we've been thinking about the different kinds of heroes that we have, our key workers who are taking on so many incredible things right now. And I just wanted to talk about one in particular, our doctors and nurses who are working so, so hard right now to look after all of us, especially those of us who are really, really poorly and need their special care. Now, when we fall over, whether it be at school or when we've been at nursery or when we're at home, we fall over and maybe we cut our knees or maybe have um, some grazes and bruises. What is it that happens next? Well, sometimes, depending on your school, you would have a little bit of cold water and a blue paper towel and a note written home to say that you'd fallen over, but you were actually okay. Whereas my mom, she was a nurse. when she was younger, and so she would use her first aid kit. Now, inside here are all the different things that you need to help you feel better when you are at home. So if you fall over and hurt your knee, you might get a sticky plaster to make it feel better. But I want to give you an example of something that feels like falling over and hurting your knees, but in life. So as you know, right now, there is something happening in our world called COVID-19. And when people meet with COVID-19, sometimes they can get really, really poorly. Um, I have experienced this. My granddad last March, um, he was really, really poorly with COVID. And unfortunately, um, he passed away and went to heaven to be with Father God after he'd met with COVID-19. And actually, that just didn't feel like falling over and hurting my knee or having a bruise on my arm because I fell over. That that felt a lot worse. It, It was a lot more pain than that. It actually felt like my heart was broken in two. So when my granddad died, my heart was broken. And actually, right now in our world, there are so many things that are happening that make people feel like they've got a broken heart. Now, our doctors and nurses do everything they can to make us all feel better. But there's one person I know who is the very best at healing our broken hearts. That's Jesus. And I want you to imagine that Jesus has a giant first aid box. What would be inside? Well, one of the biggest things that Jesus ever did for us is came to earth as a man, and he died on the cross. And that means that all the bad things that we do... He's taken those away from us when we ask for forgiveness. And actually, when we do things that are wrong and bad, it feels like we can have a very, very broken heart. But then when Jesus came and he died on that cross, he gave us the ability to have our hearts mended. So I've got in my first aid kit here a plaster in the shape of a cross. And I'm going to put my broken heart back together And you know what? I asked God to be in my life a very, very long time ago. I mean, a very long time ago. I'm a little bit of a dinosaur now. But when I asked Jesus to be in my heart, I didn't want him just to mend it. I wanted him to be my friend. I wanted to be with him for the rest of my life. I was ready to make that commitment and have Jesus by my side. Maybe this is the first time that you've heard about Jesus this week. Maybe it's the hundredth time you've heard about Jesus. But actually... I want to invite you to join me today and invite Jesus to be your friend, to be your healer, your doctor when you feel like your heart is broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a little prayer. And if you would like Jesus to be in your heart like he is in mine, then you can join him with me. So let's put our hands together and close our eyes and just say this prayer. Father God, thank you that you came to the world to heal us when we do things wrong, to heal our hearts when we feel really broken and bruised. Father God, we thank you that we have the opportunity for you to be our best friend, for your son Jesus to be our bestie. And today I ask that your son Jesus would be in my heart, 
would be in my life forever, leading me, guiding me, and loving me, and making me feel better when sometimes I don't feel very good at all. Thank you that we have the opportunity to have you in our lives and in our hearts. Amen. So thank you for listening. If you would like to know more about how God can be your healer and your bestie, then please talk to somebody at your church or get in contact with one of us and we'd love to have that discussion with you. And I pray that what you've heard from me this morning will really sit in your heart and maybe you can think about having Jesus as your best friend too. Thank you, Jess, for bringing us that God slot. It's been great to learn about Jesus as our healer. You've really taught me a lot today, Jess, so thank you. Oh, no, you're, you're very, very welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure. And we also have to say a really big thank you to everybody who's been on team today, because it's not just me and Amelia and Alice that you see on camera. It's all the key workers we've interviewed, everybody who's been working behind the scenes. Joel and Rachel have done a great job helping us film, and it's been really, really good to have loads of people on board, those faces that you can see and the faces that you can't see behind the scenes. So a big thank you to all of you. Absolutely. We couldn't have done it without so many volunteers helping us out. We're going to close our final day with prayer. So why don't you join me closing your eyes and putting your hands together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the time that we've spent together this week. We thank you for all the time of preparation that's gone into it so that we can enjoy learning more about you. We thank you for our healthcare workers and we thank you that Jesus is our healer. Amen. Amen. It's so sad that we're not introducing another day because today is the last day. Uh, we really hope that you've had a fantastic time. Please let us know what you've thought of this week. We'd love to hear from you and get your feedback. Keep those pictures and videos coming in. And it has been just such a blessing to be able to do this together and provide this for you. So have a fantastic rest of your half term. And on behalf of all of us here on the Burslem Mission Circuit, just have a really fantastic next few weeks. God bless, and we'll see you again really soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.